In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Glory be to the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now, forever, and to the age of all ages, amen. Today we uh, heard the gospel about the uh, flight of the Holy Family to Egypt and also the uh, martyrdom of the children of Bethlehem. And uh, one might ask, why, why Egypt? Why was uh, St. Joseph asked to go to Egypt? And St. John Chrysostom actually answered this question in a very beautiful way. St. John Chrysostom says, but why was Christ sent to Egypt? Why was he sent to Egypt? Uh, and he says, number one reason is to fulfill the scripture out of Egypt, I called my son, because he goes to Egypt and then he moves from Egypt back to, to Nazareth. So out of Egypt, I called my son. And actually it refers to the calling of uh, the, God's first son who is Israel out of Egypt to lead them from the lands of slavery to the lands of freedom. Also the action of going to Egypt brings hope. He says that the action of our Lord Jesus Christ going to Egypt brings hope because the well-known ro uh, world at that time was the in Roman Empire. Egypt was part of the Roman Empire and Babylon and Persia is part of Babylon. So he says Babylon and Egypt represent the whole, the whole world. So God wanted humanity to enjoy his generous gift to the world. How did God wanted humanity to enjoy his generous gift to the world? So he called from Babylon the three wise men. So the three wise men, they came from Babylon and they went back with the good news about the salvation of the Messiah, of the King of the Jews. And he went to Egypt and we all know the stories, the different stories that we hear about when the Lord entered into Egypt, all the idols started to tremble and started to fall down because they are not, they are not God. And Egypt started to know about the Messiah, about our Lord Jesus Christ and his salvation from the day he entered in Egypt. And that's why we hear today in the Psalm, the Lord has made known his salvation, his righteousness, he has revealed in the sight of the nations, of all the nations. He has remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. So salvation is for the whole world. For the wise men to come from Babylon, for our Lord to go to Egypt, the Lord is declaring the hope of salvation to the whole world. He's also teaching us a very important concept in our spiritual battles. And this is the concept of fleeing. We heard today in the Catholic epistle, uh, St. John says, Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who does what is sinful is the devil. So anyone who does good is from God. Anyone who does evil is from the devil. Because the devil has been sinning from the beginning, this is the characteristic of the devil. He has been sinning in disobedience and in pride. The reason the Son of God appeared, this is very important, the reason of, for the incarnation, for the coming of the Son of God is to destroy the devil's work. So the reason, one of the main reasons of incarnation, the coming of our Lord is to destroy the work of the devil. So we have great powers by the coming of our Lord. We have in our Lord great strength. And then he continues to say, no one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. We are called not to sin. And if we sin, we are called to repentance. We are called to do both, not to sin, to strive not to sin. And if we fall, we still have hope 
and this is the hope of repentance. Many times we talk about repentance, but sometimes we forget or we the resisting or the how to fight, how not to, how not to sin. And this is the model that we are given today. One of the, I heard one of the fathers say, resisting sin, not by fight, but by flight. Resisting sin, not by fight, but by flight, which is the model of our Lord Jesus Christ. To flee, we need to realize that there is great danger, that there is a danger of destruction, danger of death. Would someone not flee from a fire? If there is a fire and you hear the fire alarm, what will we do? Other than that, just if it's coming from the Sharia, we stay. But otherwise, what do we do? We need to flee. We cannot stay. We cannot stay and we should not stay. One time a story is told about a woman who wanted to, he, she doesn't know how to drive, and she wanted to hire a driver. So she got drivers, she made a posting, and a lot of people applied, and she asked each one, one person, one question. And she said, if you face a dangerous situation like thieves, robbers, an accident, what would you do in a face of a dangerous situation when you are driving. So the first person said, I fear nothing. I am confident and nothing that I cannot handle any dangerous, dry, any dangerous situation in driving, I can handle, I fear nothing. She said, okay, thank you. And the second one, she asked the same question. And he said, you know what, I am experienced and have faced many challenges and many dangers in driving. I have experience, not that I do not fear, but I do not fear because I have experience. And I have no problem handling any situation. She said, thank you. And the third, she asked the same question. He says, If I know that there is great risk, great challenge, I would definitely take another route. And this was the man that she decided to, to hire, the man who would avoid dangers because going into danger is very risky. And this is what the book of Proverbs teaches us. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Pay attention to what I say. Do not let your heart turn to her ways. He is talking about sin. Do not let your heart turn to her ways or stray into her path. Many are the victims she has brought down. Many are the victims of sin. Her slain are a mighty throng. The people killed. They are not weak. People destroyed by sin, none of them is weak. Her house is a highway to the grave, leading down to the chamber of death. And hence, we need to learn from the model of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is to flee, to flight. What do we need to do? Flee places of sin. We need to flee places of sin. Lot was given a choice when his shepherds made, uh, had an argument with Abraham's uh, shepherds. And he chose for himself the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. He chose by how things look. Abraham said, Lord, you chose, you choose for me. I will follow you wherever you lead me. And he went into the land of Sodom and Gomorrah and it was full of perversion and of, of sin. However, the, the Lord wanted to save him, and when the Lord wanted to save him, what was his command to him? Flee, flee to the mountain. Go up to the mountain. And we have no other mountain than our Lord Jesus Christ himself. But Lot said, you know what? I'm afraid of running. I'm afraid that I may not be able to. So can I go to this small city? Again, 
he's not fleeing to the right place. He's fleeing, but not fleeing to the right place. He, he fled to a small city, and he, when he went into this small city, we see the impact of living in a sinful city. His daughters committed perversion with him, and this was one of the impact of living in a pervert community or society and letting their values impact them. However, finally he realized and he went to the, he went to the mountain. We need to flee from places of sin. We are not strong enough not to be impacted being in a place of sin. We need to flee from sinful thoughts and desires. We need to flee sinful thoughts, desires, and habits. And this is the command of St. Paul to his disciple Timothy. Flee the devil. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Do not have anything to do with foolish and stupid argument, even arguments that are not productive, flee from them, avoid them, because you know they produce quarrel. Going into arguments that are not productive would produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Flee from desires of youth and pursue righteousness. We also need to flee from people who have bad influence or who could have bad influence on us. Samson did not flee. Samson, he thought, I'm strong. And he was extremely strong. He was mighty. But he said, I am strong. I can do whatever. He did not flee. And what was the end of him staying with bad influence? He was blinded. He was bound and he was left to grind. So this is the consequence of sin, of not fleeing. And this is what we hear in Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk, does not sit, does not walk, does not stand, does not sit in the place of evil, in the place of unrighteousness. Very analogy is said about, and also Joseph, he fled from the place of sin, from the thoughts of sin, from the bad influence. And the consequence was that he left his clothes and he ran away naked. And someone made a very nice contemplation. He said, a fighter, when you watch wrestling matches, what do people wear? Almost nothing, right? Why do they wear nothing? So no one would grab them from clothes, by their clothes. If they're wearing clothes, if they're wearing anything, this is a weak point. So they wear nothing so no one would grab them. How if they were, uh, 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 like, like anoint their bodies with oil, can anyone grab them? Of course not. We are as such, we have been asked to flee naked. What does flee naked mean? I will explain. And we have been anointed. We are always anointed by the Holy Myron. We are sealed. We belong to God. Naked here does not mean literally no clothes, but it means naked. Nothing can hold me. Nothing where the devil could grab me by. Nothing where the devil could hold me by, meaning nothing overrules me. I'm not grabbed by anything, and this is the value of fasting. Our fasting is, is, is many, has many, many benefits, and one of the benefits is to train myself to be naked, meaning train myself to have no desire for something. Nothing would overrule me, nothing I would be tempted by, so that the devil, because this is the devil, he finds what is my weak point, what he can, could grab me with, my thoughts, my pride, possessions, anything. He would find my weak point. But when I fast, I train to let go of all of these things. So we are given, we are given an advice to flee from the devil. 
we are given advice not to walk, not to stand, not to sit in the place of evil, but flee. And when we flee, this is very important, we flee to a specific place, we flee to the mountain. And the mountain is our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what we pray in the fraction. Portray his wounds, the fraction of the sun, portray his wound before you that you may take refuge in him when the enemy stirs temptation around you. May the Lord give us wisdom to be able to take refuge in him, to flee from temptation, and not to trust in our abilities, but trust in him and flee to him. Glory be to the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, Amen.